Hey, what's up there, Soul First? Today I'm going to show you how you can clean one of these, which is a high volume, low pressure spray gun. And I'll be showing you how to do this on this central pneumatic spray gun that I got from Harbor Freight for about 16 bucks. And uh, this is going to be in preparation for uh, painting the rear bumper on my Audi, for which I put a link to right here on this side of the screen. And in that video, I go over how you can uh, apply filler and do some, uh, how to sand and then do prep work and then apply base coat, clear coat to a plastic bumper cover. All right, I'll also give you another link right here on the lower side of the screen to a video series I did on how you can uh, do prep work and then sand and apply body filler to minor dents and dings on your panels. And also how you can apply a base coat. I'll also cover how you can blend your base coat into adjacent panels. Then I had to apply clear coat and also cover how you can wet sand and then uh, buff your finish. And if you're interested in knowing more about how to paint uh, your car, I'll strongly suggest you watch that video. All right, so let's just quickly start with the content of this box. Uh, here we got the, the gun itself. We got manuals. There's our fluid cup. And we got this uh, little brush here. All right, so if you do buy one of these, it is important that you clean it even though it was just, this is new out of the box. These guns come with some assembly lube that you guys may not be able to see, but it's all over them and it's also on the inside and you don't want that lube to end up on your uh, on your finish, it'll definitely uh, destroy your paint job. All right, but before we get onto the cleaning procedure, let's quickly talk about the different controllers that are on this gun. All right, this little controller down here is gonna be your built-in air pressure regulator. What I like to do with this one is just to unscrew it all the way, just make sure you don't actually uh, take it out, but unscrew it all the way. And then I like to screw on uh, my own air pressure regulator. This way you can uh, more accurately control how much air is going into this gun. I also like to attach these little moisture traps to my air regulators. This way, you can make sure no uh, moisture or uh, you know water droplets gets into your paint job and possibly ruin your finish. All right, next up, this little controller right up here. This is going to be for your fan spray area. So if you turn this uh, counterclockwise uh, and open it, it's going to maximize your fan spray area. And if you turn it clockwise and screw it in, it's just going to slowly decrease that area. And for beginners, it's recommended to turn this all the way counterclockwise then turn it in about half a turn to a turn. This way you get a nice uh, big fan spray area and that way you lower the risk of leaving streaks on your finish. Next, this little valve in the back here. This is gonna control the amount of fluid that goes uh, into your spray gun and out the tip of your spray gun while you're spraying. And again, for beginners, it's recommended since we're putting this all the way to the max to also unscrew this all the way so that way you get uh, the max or pretty much near the max, uh, maximum amount of fluid passing through your spray gun. And you do that by just unscrewing this all the way and then turning it in half a turn to one full turn. And if you wanna make sure that the, this adjustment doesn't move, you can just turn this in, the second one, all the way. And this locks it in. Also, I should mention that I don't like to use the gun filter that comes with these guns. Uh, a lot of times when I use the filter, uh, it kind of gets in the way of the fluid passing through the gun as fast or as, as uh, freely as it should. And as long as you properly clean your air gun and then strain your uh, base coat and clear coat before you put in your gun, you should be fine not using an air filter. All right, so what I'd like to do next is to get a container like this and then just fill it about a quarter to halfway full with a uh, lacquer thinner. And next, if we were gonna clean our spray gun right after a paint job, I would obviously take the cap off and then pour the leftover paint or clear coat into a container and then take off the, the cup. You should also open the trigger and pour out any of the paint that's inside here as well. Next, we remove our nozzle cap by just twisting it off. Next, we'll throw it in our container. Also, a very good idea to wear some gloves. Next, we're gonna remove our needle by unscrewing this all the way. And there's gonna be a little spring here as well that you need to remove. I'm gonna throw these in here as well. And next we can just uh, use the trigger to push out the needle a little bit, then grab it by hand, and then pull it out. All right, next we're gonna remove this nozzle. They used to supply a wrench, which is this one right here that I've kept from an old one that you could use to take these off, but they don't have it, they don't uh, supply it anymore with the new uh, spray guns. Well, so if you don't have this, you're gonna have to use either a 19 or 20, 20 millimeter wrench to twist this off. There we go. You see all the oil that's on these gloves? And this one goes in here as well. All right, so to clean these parts, we can either use a supplied brush or just get a spray gun cleaning kit and use all the different brushes that are supplied with this 
uh, which make it a lot easier to clean these. Here's my favorite brush. And next we'll just start washing these down with uh, lacquer thinner using our brush. You want to make sure you're very thorough and get all the old uh, paint or clear coat or in our case assembly loop off of each and every part. I also like to rinse these off using my air gun as well. Now we'll set them aside in a clean area. Alright next up our nozzle cap and this is basically we clean this the same way we're first going to use a lacquer thinner to clean it off thoroughly but you want to pay special attention to these holes that are on these cap on this cap right these little tiny holes right here and also these two holes on the sides you want to get either a toothpick or a tiny tiny needle that passes through these and make sure you thoroughly clean these and these are free of any uh, dried up base coat or clear coat otherwise if you don't clean these when well, next time you go to spray your uh, spray gun is not going to work properly and then uh, you're not going to get an even pattern when you uh, press down on the trigger. And then with my air gun I like to force air through uh, each one of these tiny little holes. Alright next up our fluid nozzle. This one also has these little holes on the sides in addition to the hole in the middle that's for your needle. And these are a little larger so we don't really need to use a toothpick but if we force air, we'll use our air gun and force air through them it should clear them out. Next up, spray gun itself. What I like to do is just to, to turn this upside down, put it in the, our container, uh, shake it around a little bit, pull it back out, then get a brush like this one from our uh, cleaning kit and get it in here, twist it around and try to get as much as of the paint or clear coat or in our case uh, assembly loop off of it as I can. Clean it this way as well. Then go in from top like this, put it back in Put it out, rinse and repeat this procedure a couple of times and then it should be good. And last but not least, I like to get my air gun again and then force air through the spray gun in uh, both directions. Alright, next up we're going to clean our cup. I also switched out the lacquer thinner but uh, you probably want to do the same because uh, you more than likely have a lot of uh, dried up base coat or clear coat in here which is going to require a clean new lacquer thinner to clean up. And then what I like to do is just to put it in it like this, dip my brush in the lacquer thinner and then start from top and work my way down. And last but not least we clean up our uh, lid. Alright next it's time to reassemble our gun and first I like to start with our uh, fluid nozzle. And then use a wrench to tighten it down. Then we'll screw on our uh, nozzle cap. And before you tighten it down you want to make sure this is positioned this way because if you leave it this way your fan is going to come out this way instead of this way. Next we'll put on our needle, we'll just put it through here line it up and just push it all the way in. Next this little spring that goes on the back and then this little controller. Next it's time to put on our cup but before we do that we're going to put some Teflon tape here so base coat or clear coat doesn't leak on your gun. And when you're putting on Teflon tape you want to make sure you put it in the same direction that you're going to be screwing this in because otherwise once if you do it the other way around and you go to screw this in you're going to just unwind the Teflon tape. In other words, just put it in clockwise. <laughs> All right, next we can screw in our cup. All right, next I'm going to put on my regulator, but before I put it on, I'm going to put some Teflon tape on these threads as well. There we go. And next I just like to pour in a little bit of lacquer thinner into the cup. And then we're going to spray the lacquer thinner through the gun. Just make sure you wear your mask. And that's all there is to it. Now obviously it's not a professional gun so your results are going to be different. But if you do everything else correctly uh, your final finish, uh, the difference between that and a finish where a professional grade gun was used is not going to be huge. In fact, I would bet that only someone with a, you know, a lot of experience that's been spraying cars for many years would be able to tell the difference. So with that said, hope this video helps people out there. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You may also want to consider checking out some of my other videos. Alright, thanks for watching. See you next time.